Now that we've been able to display a label with the text Hello World on it on our simulator, it's time to go ahead and figure out how to add a button so that we can dynamically change our label in code. So let's go ahead and we can type in button at the bottom here and drag a button in. You'll notice that in our object library here, we have quite a few different types of buttons. We want to make sure we just select the button. And we can use these blue guiding lines to make sure that we're centering this up. And we can actually even change the text by double clicking on our button and saying something like press me. And we can center this up again. And the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to hook up both of these elements to what we call our view controller. And basically what this is going to allow us to do is in code, our view controllers are responsible for managing this view. And this view is currently on our storyboard, which is where we can add our graphical elements. So in order to hook this up, or at least to make our view controller aware that these view objects exist so we can change them in code, we can hold down the Alt key and press on ccviewcontroller.h. And this is what's called the header file here. And we'll talk more about what this is in our later videos together. But for now, we want to figure out how to hook up view objects to our view controller so that we can access these view objects in code. So we're going to go ahead and hold down the control key with the label selected. And we can confirm that our label is in fact selected by looking in our scene outline here on the left. And with my label selected, I'm going to go ahead and control drag to my header file here. And I'm going to see insert outlet or outlet connection. Now it's really important that you don't drag it up to the top here, right? It's not going to appear. And it's important that you don't drop it, drag, try to drag it below this at end either, because it won't work either. So we want to drag it in between. And it's going to say insert outlet or outlet connection you can release. And we'll get this connection type. So here we're going to say this is an outlet. Outlets are the way we change our view object's attributes. It's the way we get access to our view object. And specifically, we're going to create an IB outlet here. We're not going to create an outlet connection. We won't be using those in this course. So we need to give this a name. And we can call this something like title label. And notice that I'm using camel case here. And we want to give the type as a UI label, and its storage type is going to be strong. Don't worry too much about these options right now. We'll be doing quite a bit of this in terms of hooking up different view objects, so we'll have plenty of time to get used to this process. So we can press connect. And incidentally, if you're interested, UI label is the class or the type of view object, right? This is a UI label that we dragged in. Title label is the name, and when we select st selected strong, we selected the pointer type was going to be a strong pointer. Right? So it increases the retain count by one. IV outlet here simply says that this is a pointer to a view object on our storyboard. So it's a helper for the compiler. And finally, there's two other things we have here. We have non-atomic, which we won't get into locking code right now, but this makes it not thread safe. And at property here says that this view object is an attribute of our view controller. So we're going to talk about properties in depth. But this is the code that gets generated when we connect up our view object. And we'll figure out how to access this view object in code in just a minute. We're going to be doing that accessing in ccviewcontroller.m. Now before we get there, we want to hook up our button. Uh, so we can control drag to our header file again. And we see that this time we actually have another option. It says insert outlet action or outlet connection. Now we could make this an outlet if we wanted to change the, our button dynamically. If we wanted to add a different background color, some sort of text color. But we actually want to use an action for our connection type here because we want some code or a method, which is just a bit of code, to evaluate when we press our button. Specifically, we're going to want to change our labels text dynamically when, our, when we press our button. So the naming convention for buttons should hint to the fact that it is in fact an action. So we can go ahead and call this button pressed. 
And this says, in fact, that some action has occurred. The button was pressed. We can also change the type to UI button, although if you leave it as ID, it won't make any difference. We'll talk more about parameters right now, but this is going to set the parameter to be of type UI button. We can also select the event type to be touch up inside. We're going to touch up inside our button in order for the event to trigger. And this is just the default, so we can leave that. And the arguments, we're also going to use the default as sender. Again, we'll talk more about these options later on but these are the options you want to select. So we can press connect, and we see that this code that got generated looks much different than the property we generated. So we see IB action, and there's a subtraction sign here. It says button pressed, UI button sender. Well, this is actually a method, and IB action actually gets typed F to void, so this method does not return anything. And if that makes no sense, don't worry about it. We're gonna be covering methods in quite a bit of depth as we go through the course. So bear with me, we're gonna figure out how this method works together. So let's go back to single view and we're gonna to go to ccviewcontroller.m and you're gonna write your first bit of Objective-C code. So we see this button pressed actually also had code generated here. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some returns to make this a little bit closer to the way Apple generates their methods. And basically what happens here is when the user presses the button, Everything inside of these curly braces will evaluate. So we can write a line of code here. And what we're, this code is going to do is it's going to change our label's text property. Now, again, we're going to have to talk about properties later on. But for now, we can figure out how to at least make them work. So we're going to say use the self keyword. And what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to access that attribute we set up in our header file. So we're going to be able to say title label and labels happen to have a property called text and we can actually chain our properties together and properties are just attributes. So our label has a property text and if we set this equal to uh, the correct type or a type that it understands specifically we're going to use an NS string which is the ability to join the characters together and we can display that as text here. So we're going to say add quote and we're going to say hello class. And this is just shorthand to create an NS string. And an NS string is the same type as our text here. In fact, if we go ahead and press delete here and start typing text, we see that its class is NS string here. So even though you probably don't understand everything that's going on here, hopefully you're seeing that Xcode is providing all these cool colors here. And it's providing all these helpers as we're typing things in to help us autocomplete and get things in correctly. You can see that there are other properties here of our title labels. So specifically, you might recognize text color, text alignment. You might not be familiar with text input mode, but that's okay. We're not going to be using that for quite a long time. So we're going to stick with text here. And when we press our button, this code should evaluate. We're only going to evaluate one line of code and it should update the title labels text property to say hello class. So let's go ahead and run our application here. And when it loads up, we should see hello world appear first. And then when we press our button, we should be able to convert it to hello class. And you can feel confident that you've written your first line of code. So let's go ahead and press our button here and we see it switches to hello class.